Hey, hockey fans, T-Boss is 13-3 and three here with top shelf guests, Michigan Tech University assistant coaches, Tyler Shalast, Jordy Murray, Alec Bretzman. This episode is sponsored by Riverside Bike and Skate, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Hertel Law, Kelly Heating and Electric, Eau Claire Ford, and Northwoods Therapy Associates, Mogi. All right, so we're here at the John McGinnis Student Ice Arena. A uh, special thanks goes out to Coach Sean for evidently not giving these guys much of a choice for sitting down and yakking with us this morning before their game with Minnesota State. So uh, thanks for thanks for joining us today, guys. Appreciate it. You bet. Thanks. You know, you've all started in different places but ended up in Michigan Tech. Let's start out with Alec. Where are you from? When did you start playing hockey? Uh, so I'm from Hudson, Wisconsin, so not too far from where you guys are based out of. Um, grew up playing hockey there in the Hudson Association. Went to St. Thomas Academy for high school and then junior hockey in Madison and then ended up here. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Jordy? Uh, originally, my family was from Manitoba, but uh, my dad coached and we moved around a lot when I was younger. So I'd say home base when I was real young was Manitoba. And then when my brother was old enough to go to Shattuck St. Mary's, we, we moved the family down to Fairbolt. And that's where I played my hockey and uh, ended up at Wisconsin, and then in Switzerland, and then got into coaching. All right. Tyler. Yeah, so Kelowna, British Columbia, um, pretty much played all my minor hockey there. Played in the BC Junior League, um, Michigan Tech, and then obviously the the pro after for four years. So and now back at Tech. So obviously uh, all ended up being hockey players. And Jordy, we know a little bit more about your family background based on your dad's coaching. But uh, the rest of you guys, um, were you, did you come from hockey families? Not at all. I was I was the first one. So my parents didn't really know the ropes and just threw me out there and we figured it out. <laughs> Did, well, obviously what, what, they did well. Yeah, they did. What motivated you to get started? Did they kind of push you along, or did you have some buddies that were skating? Just always. My dad would watch hockey on TV, and apparently I just mini sticks, picked that up, and then I went from there. Cool. All cool. right, Tyler? I mean, pretty much being Canadian, Western Canadian, you have no option. Um, no. <laughs> <You're> uh, <right. laughs> but, but, yeah, I mean, pretty much, um, you know, two and a half, three years old, you're kind of on those – double bladed skates out on the pond and then as you get older you're on the outdoor rink and really you get into minor hockey so um it's always been in my family it's like no one in my family i guess played anything higher than just hockey association but like i said you're you're pretty much growing up with it um you know i was born in edmonton so during the gretzky and stuff like that i was like five six years old so got to kind of grow up with that so you're definitely really involved in hockey yeah, very cool. Yeah. Jordy, you were kind of a vagabond, you know, when it came to hockey, moving around. Tell us a little bit about your family history and what was that like, uh, you know, following your dad around to different locations? Yeah, well, my dad coached, I think it's 30 years professionally, and then the last 10 years he was at Western Michigan. Um, so we moved around, and obviously that's not the most stable profession, um, <laughs> especially in the pro ranks. Right. But So we moved around quite a bit when I was younger. I don't think it affected me as much as uh, my older siblings. I'm the youngest of three. Uh, but we were in – I was born in New Jersey when he was with Philadelphia. Then we moved over to Switzerland for a bit, and he was in Germany for a bit. And then we moved back to uh, Minnesota with the North Stars, then up to Winnipeg, um, and then Calgary. And then when my brother was old enough to go to Shattuck, uh, we moved to Minnesota, and that was kind of our home base. And my dad went to L.A. and St. Louis from there. But we stayed in Faribault. I was third grade, so it didn't really affect me. Um, but my older siblings, I think it was tough to re reroute their lives uh, when, when they're when you're a little bit older and you make friends. But um, for me, I didn't know any different. It was I was just going wherever my dad was, and the hockey was always good in, in every spot we went to. So that's what I really cared about when I was younger. Um, so I think it was really good, honestly, a good experience for me to go to all these different places. And, and I still have friends from all these different countries and cities. So so quite worldly you are. I don't know if I'd say worldly, but I've been been to different been places. Around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Alec and Jordy, you guys both played at prestigious high school programs in Minnesota with uh, Alec being at uh, St. Thomas Academy and then uh, Jordy at Saint Shattuck St. Mary's. So how did playing at these schools prepare you to play at the next level? Uh, just St. Thomas as a whole. I mean, it's military, JROTC school, preps you for a lot of things in life outside of hockey. I think that was very influential. And then 
Uh, I had a great coach there in Tom Vanelli. Um, just learned a lot from him. Great friendships, great time, good teams. Yeah, it was just all great memories. So you grew up in Wisconsin. Um, did you have any experience with the Wisconsin State High School Tournament versus the Minnesota State High School Tournament? Well, I was in the Minnesota State High School Tournament, so I really enjoyed that. But then I played Team Wisconsin as well. So I was still traveling all over Wisconsin before and after high school season and doing that. Sure. Okay. You know, for our listeners, when you talk about the Minnesota State Hockey Tournament, compared to just about any place else in the United States, you know, and then you look at Wisconsin State High School Tournament, tell us what that's like when you're on the big stage for that high school tournament in Minnesota. You can't, you can't really explain it. Like everyone seems like from the entire state comes just to watch high schoolers play hockey. It's just a crazy atmosphere, a tremendous amount of fun. Um, just all around awesome. Biggest crowd you ever played in front of? Yeah, it's gotta be. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's something. Jordy, how about you? I think similar to, to, to bots is, Everyone wants to move on and play college hockey, professional hockey at Shattuck. So uh, we had great coaches. Obviously, Tom Ward was an amazing coach, big influence on me. But it's just the guys um, and our practices um, and, and just how intense they were. And uh, guys doing extra stuff afterwards, going to the gym, like no matter how tired you were, it's just everyone had the same mentality of wanting to get better and move on. And um, I think it just it made our practice hard in our games. It's, it's a big thing we talked about when we were there. And it's a culture we're trying to obviously build here. And I think we're starting to get it going. So, Well, a couple of you played juniors before jumping up to D1 hockey. Jordy, you made the jump directly. But let's talk Tyler for a second. You played juniors before coming to Tech. Tell us a little bit about the step going from like the high school age to juniors and then to D1 hockey. Yeah, so where, where it's a little bit different, I mean, it was a little bit different back then. So especially, I would say in Canada, the the midget wasn't very strong. So whereas now they've kind of changed it where, you know, they have major midget, they have stuff like that. Like we never really had that. We had midget, um, but the biggest thing in BC was actually junior B. And all the junior B teams were affiliated with junior A teams. Um, to this day, that was probably the biggest move that I ever made was when I was 16, I left home um, went and played junior B like, and for example, how good junior B was Shea Weber was on my team. So, wow. so it was like you, you went and played junior B, like you could, you could fight. It was, you know, you're away from home. Um, so like did that. And then really what happened was the next year when I went and played junior A, like I was ready, like I had already played junior, I'd already lived away from home. So I didn't kind of have that, um, you know, that first year being away from home type thing, I'd already done it. Um, so my first year, my first year of junior A was, you know, I was, I was really successful and that kind of like springboarded me to where, um, you know, I got into my second year where I was, you know, ready to get a college scholarship. And it was also different, right? Like you weren't, um, everybody wasn't committed like at 16 and 17, like a lot of kids were trying to get a scholarship at 18, trying to get a scholarship at 19. Um, but it was kind of that platform going from, you know, not playing midget to playing junior B to playing junior A. Um, and then really just trying to learn how to just get to the next level, like at the collegiate level as a freshman and kind of grow, go from there. Wow. That's, that's awesome. How about you, Alec? Yeah, from high school to juniors was probably the biggest step. Um, you're playing high school. It's not, I mean, it is competitive, but not every day, like playing in the USHL. So going to the USHL my first year, huge step, learned a ton. Wasn't overly productive, but every day playing against that high level competition really helped me. Going into my second year, got a little bit better, same thing. Uh, started to get offers, but knew I had more, more to more to go. So I bet on myself for my third year, and that's really when I jumped and had an awesome third year. Ended up deciding on coming to Tech, and that third year was probably the best for my development, my confidence in myself, and taking that next step forward. So, Jordy, you're the only one of the three that was able to make that jump from high school right to D1 with the Badgers. How did you accomplish that feat? Uh, my roommate at Shattuck was Derek Stepan. I think they really wanted oh. to bring him in. And, um, so I was just, no, I, I, another part of it was, uh, 
Uh, Wisconsin had a really good team. They won the national championship two years before. They were going through kind of a rebuilding. Like a lot of guys signed uh, off those good teams, and they had some spots. And we ended up having a pretty big freshman class coming in. So they they brought me in. Um, probably looking back, I could I definitely could have used that year of juniors. Um, but I'm you know I'm definitely happy to go in when I went went in. I just had to uh, you know play a different role than what I played. Obviously in high school it was a completely different game and everything. Um, but I thought I adjusted pretty well and had really good coaches behind me. Nice. Each one of you brings a different skill set to the game. And as a result, you ended up getting D1 scholarships. So let's start out with Alec. When did you start getting looks? You know, who was looking at you and what skill set were you bringing to the game that, that teams wanted you? So I'd say I was a power forward, size, strength, could shoot the puck. Um, first year juniors didn't get a whole ton. Second year, I started talking to teams and they kind of helped my development on these are the strengths of your games. This is what you need to bring on a nightly basis. Um, and then just kept learning from that. And then my third year, I just had a really good start and a ton of offers were coming in and then just Michigan tech, uh, sounded good on the, on the ears and the eyes and came up here and visited and fell in love with this place. All right. How about uh how about you, sir? Um I mean, I would say probably kind of just an abrasive power forward. Um <laughs> Is that a way of saying you were gritty? I was I was slightly gritty. Um I mean, the game was a little bit different, but I mean, it was kind of I mean, I remember like even my first, you know, five junior A games like five fights and stuff like that. So you're just trying to kind of make it and trying to figure it out. Um, it really actually wasn't until probably my junior year of college where um, I think like the, the skating and underhandling and stuff like that really kind of changed. And that was really just from whether it was doing power skating or being in the gym or for whatever it was, because that was kind of the different element that uh, honestly changed from being, you know, maybe just a guy that was, you know, going to be a good college player. Then all of a sudden I was an NHL prospect because I was like big and could skate and was physical. So um, that was just kind of how it kind of evolved. I mean, I came from really like I, you know, played Bantam B, you know, I played Bantam B. I was like a fourth line Bantam triple A player. So it was really, like I said, going back to that 16 year old year where, you know, I kind of had to understand and I was probably more of a skilled guy in Bantam. And like in Pee Wee was like really skilled and then kind of had to start figuring out that, you know, I'm going to have to be more, I'm going to have to be harder. And and it just kind of naturally, you know, came out, but, um, that was probably the biggest thing for me. I would say similar to bots, like trying to be a, you know, hard power forward, power forward skating, shoot on the rush, like everything like that. But it was really that junior year where it kind of like started to click. Um, and it changed, you know, what type of prospect I was going to be. Did anybody talk to you about making those changes as you evolved up the up the ladder? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, for example, like I, I talked with, I think it was after my, it was during my sophomore year at the GLI, like I talked with like Montreal. Um, and Montreal was basically like, you know, you need to play with more pace. You need to skate better. You need to get stronger. A lot of your skating, I wasn't a bad skater, but like, you know, at the NHL level, they think of it in a little bit of a different manner in terms of like getting around the ice. So that was when they, it was kind of like, I guess clicked in terms of like what I had to really just focus on over and over to get better at, to get to, you know, the potential of, you know, wanting to, or getting to sign an NHL deal. Um, so it kind of started then. And then, like I said, that whole summer, it's just all I did was like shoot pucks and under handle pucks and skate. And I stayed up here at tech actually. So we had the ice. So I just go out and just skate and skate and skate. And, you know, all of a sudden my junior year, like I had that different element, which changed, like I said, what I was from a, from a prospect standpoint. Nice. Wow. You put in the work. That's for sure. Jordy, how about you? What was the skill set you were bringing that the Badgers wanted? Uh, I mean, just as an undersized forward and, and I mean, I wasn't, I had good skill, I had good speed, but I wasn't the most skilled. I wasn't the fastest. So I had to bring another element. I think what made me kind of attractive to some colleges was uh, I thought I had a good motor, especially in high school and good energy. And I would consider myself what we call a four checking forward. 
um, who can can make plays. Um, so I think if you're a skill guy and you're undersized, you're you're limited. You're you have to be really really skilled. But if you can bring another element, which for me was my energy and my compete, um, you can get by. You know, when when skill's not there, if you have your B game that night, you can get by on helping your team doing other things. And so I thought I had other elements. Um, like when I went into Wisconsin as a true freshman, I think I was like 140 pounds, um, but I ended up playing like a third line role for them and then let our, happy to say I let our team in hits that year. I don't know how we tracked Holy them. Wow. I think, I think this, our strength coach tracked him and I think he just really liked me. So, um, but I just knew I had to do something. I wasn't, you know, in high school, it was two points a night. And in college, I, I think I had 10 or 12 my first year. So I knew I had to do something else to help the team. And my dad has always been really good about that. Um, never really praised me for skill plays um, when I was growing up or, or nice goals or whatever. It was all, you know, effort and compete things. And um, so I knew, and his big thing was, you have to help the team somehow. You have to impact the game somehow. And it's what we're telling our guys right now. And um, I knew for me, it wasn't going to be based on my skill or, really my speed it was going to be based on my energy and winning my battles when i can and getting the puck to the more skilled guys and getting to the net so well i i'd like to know you know two guys here who ended up at tech and and won at wisconsin we've talked to some older tech guys who talked about what recruiting was like back in the day like uh, darcy way talked about the fact that he came and visited tech and he had breakfast and it was a paper plate with a couple eggs and bacon on it and Coach McGinnis came by and said, hey, I'd really like for you to play for us. And and that was total recruiting. So <laughs> what was it like, you know, Tyler and, and Alec, what was it like for you guys that Tech did to recruit you guys to come here? Well, I mean, I mean, and, and I still kind of re- this is how I recruit kids to this day. It's development and opportunity, um, you know, looking at I mean. The, I mean, the WCHA back, I mean, Jordy played in as well, but back in the day, right? Like you were looking at the National League contracts that were coming out of that with Oshi, Kessel, and all those guys. Um, but really, it was, like I said, development and opportunity. The assistant coach that recruited me, Ian Calais, um, you know, Western Canadian guy, like just kind of drew me to it like we're we're trying to build something special here we're trying to you know recruit players that are similar to you we want to grow a culture and take a step um you know you want to be part of that like you want to be part of something if you're trying to rebuild it um you want to be part of something special and something you know that's memorable so that was really what it was for me it was it was i wanted to you know get into a situation situation like that but wanted to play um you know really you want to go to a place where you can play like if you look at tax records like we were like they were like seven and 25 and seven and 28 and stuff like that um before i came in so you're looking for opportunity i got an opportunity right away and kind of you know use it as a as a jumping board forward all right alec yeah so a little later so tech had some recent success here um, I was talking to big schools and like what Shells was saying, the cultures, what drew me here, um, just completely sold itself. Uh, I had a ton, couple friends that were here already, had such high praise for this, for this program. So this was the first visit I took, came right up here and just knew it was the spot. Wow. First visit. Yeah. Wow. Well, actually cool. I took one in high school, but that okay. was five years earlier. Okay. It doesn't count. <laughs> sure. So <laughs> what time of year did you come up here to visit? It was early fall so no snow yet okay <laughs> so but but i heard all about it <laughs> all right jordy what was the experience for recruiting at wisconsin so i narrowed my schools down um pretty quickly so i committed when i was i think sophomore summer um and it was notre dame or wisconsin two pretty opposite schools um I loved them both. I had a really good relationship with the Notre Dame coaching staff. They coached me at uh, national camp, Andy Slagert, who's their assistant, still there. Uh, so I had a really good relationship with him. They were in the process of building their, their new rink that they have now. They were playing in the old field house. I don't know if you guys remember that old rink. Um, and then there was the Cole Center, <laughs> which was beautiful, <laughs> pretty new. Um, yeah. And they're just completely different campuses, and I loved them both. Uh, I just... I went to Shattuck from sixth grade to senior year. So I just did the small school, private school thing. Um, and I thought Wisconsin was going to be completely different. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously they won the national championship the year I committed. So they, they had a, and they've always had a good history and, um, yeah. And my dad knew Mike Eves, they coached together in Philadelphia. So there's a lot of history there. And, uh, I remember one thing when I was on my visit and uh, I use it with our guys when they come on visits here is, uh, there's a big hill and on Madison's campus and it's called Bascom Hill. And he took me to the top of the hill and it's overlooking all of campus. It's beautiful. I think it was, yeah, it was in the spring and, uh, he's like, could you see yourself being happy here, uh, you know, for four years, even if you weren't a hockey player? And I was, and that kind of really sunk home. I was like, yeah, I, I love it here. And, and I did love my time there. And, um, but I use that when I take guys, when they fly in on the ski hill, you can go on top and you can see all of campus and everything. And yeah, obviously not in the winter, but, um, in the fall, it's really, really nice. And, um, but yeah, I think you got to be happy wherever you go. You got to be happy there, regardless of the hockey or the hockey program. And I think that him saying it that way and me really thinking about it, I, um, it really sunk home that that's where I wanted to be. Wow, pretty cool. As you guys look back on your hockey careers, whether high school, I know there's some age differences here, but did you guys ever cross paths against each other on the ice at any time? I'm much older than them. <laughs> <laughs> we might have played together my freshman year. Oh eight oh nine. It was when was your last year in college? My oh seven oh eight. So we missed by a year. Yeah. You played against. You played against my brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I played against his brother in junior, and then obviously his brother was at North Dakota um, when I was at Tech. So. Well, how about as far as coaches, Jordy? Have you ever uh, had the chance to battle your dad at at Western Michigan at all? Uh, no, I haven't. But uh, my year at Notre Dame, we end up coming up here uh, first game of the year. And, uh, you know, Tyler was coaching and Alec was playing. Um, oh, okay. so that was a pretty cool experience. And I haven't been back since we played up here when I was at Wisconsin. So it was really, and it was the first game that really all the fans had come because the year before was COVID year. And, um, I just remember how crazy, crazy it was. And I just like how I remembered it when I was playing in the WCHA all those years ago. So you guys all played professionally after your college career. How big was the jump from college to pro? Well, I mean, so I would, you know, I was fortunate enough to obviously sign an NHL deal. Um, and it, it was kind of cool. Like I was, so I first obviously went to the American league, but I, I got an experience to go up with Dallas for playoffs um, for a round where they're playing Anaheim and just, even just getting to skate with some of those guys and then kind of going through camps the next couple of years and like watching, um, you know, even Medano or like Brad Richards or any of those guys, like the, you, you see, uh, you, you learn pretty quickly what skill is, um, because there's a difference. Like there's just like those one percenters do things that, um, you know, they, they're, it's incredible. And like Jamie Ben was a rookie, like my first year. Right. And like, watching that kid and you're like, okay, that kid's going to be, you know, he's going to be a star and he's, you know, he's big and he's got bite. Um, so it, it was just different. Like the jump is that you just kind of realize what you have to do to be successful. Um, and if you have to play a certain way to be successful, you look at a lot of guys that make it, um, especially in the time that I played, like, you know, it wasn't about points. It was about um, you know, character as a player, sticking up for teammates, fighting was a big part of the game. Um, you didn't necessarily even have to have a ton of, you know, a, a ton of skill or anything. You just kind of have that kind of grit to compete. And to be honest, I, I, that's where I kind of lost it. Um, I had like a relatively good college career in terms of scoring goals. So I thought at that level, um, you know, that's kind of going to be what the player I was going to be. Um, and really, like, if I would have just played hard every night, stuck up for teammates, I had, like, probably the easiest path that I could have. And you don't realize it until, you know, you're much older and it's kind of gone. Um, but that's something that, especially I, you know, go with our guys now, is, like, you guys have to understand, like, the path, like, to be Patrick Kane or Bedard is, like, there's one of them on each team. But there's 20 other kids, 20 other guys that play hard, that are responsible, that can kill penalties, that are role guys. That's the way to, that's the way to make it, you know, because it's, you want to make $8 million a year, you better have 90 points. You know, there's, there's guys that play NCAA that have 50 points in college that are third and fourth line guys in the NHL. Yeah. So you think about that, like just that level that like the 1%, those top guys are at, like when you see it, you're like, Okay, I got to do it differently. Um, 
I never really, I kind of fought that, but you know, you see, you see it a lot more hindsight, right? So, yeah. Wow. That's a good explanation. Yeah. Very yeah. intuitive. Jordy, or you got anything to add to that? Uh, so I, I played pro in Switzerland. Um, so played on a bigger sheet, a uh, little bit of a different game. I actually think it suited my game probably better than over here on the smaller ice, just cause I, I was a pretty good skater, but, um, yeah, I mean, like kind of like Tyler said, it's it's not a, as much of a step up as probably the AHL or NHL where he was, but um, you got to change your game a little bit and be expected to play different roles and, um, you know, not playing as many minutes as you were when you were back in college. It's kind of the same adjustment you made when you went from high school to to, to college or junior to college. And, um, yeah, I, I liked it. It's obviously different country, a little culture shock, um, but I had some really good older players on my team, uh, Canadians, who really helped me adjust. I was 21 when I moved over there, so it was – and my brother also played in the same league on a different team, which was really cool. We got to play against each other and see each other quite a bit, which was a small country. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I thought the adjustment went pretty good. I had, you know, a few concussions when I was in college, and then they kind of piled up when I was playing pro, so I ended up – playing a few more years less than I would have liked, but a uh, great experience overall. Wow. Alec. I mean, those were two really good answers, but I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my stint wasn't very long. I gave it a year and then, uh, so I started, I went to Chicago Wolves AHL camp. Uh, I played pretty well, but it was just the transition. I mean, everyone is top notch. They all got skill. They all compete. They all work hard. You've got to figure out what you bring that can prove yourself in that stage, especially in camp. Um, so then after that week, I got sent down to the East Coast, was in Iowa. And I thought at that level, my best parts of my game gave me success. Um, the difference between college and pro, everyone seems massive, strong. Yeah. So, I mean, as a size strength forward, I was willing to fight, get in, hit. Uh, I thought I, I stepped right in and I felt like I was successful and impactful. Um, the difference is the skill. <laughs> My skill wasn't as good as a lot of these guys, and there's guys that are out there up and down between AHL and East Coast that just have unbelievable skill and can make plays left and right. And I tried to do that, um, tried to develop that, and then ended up getting injured and took a, some of the fun out of it and then had the opportunity to come coach here. My plan was to go back and play, but just this was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. So, Wow, very good. We're going to give a quick shout-out to some of our sponsors here. Northwoods Therapy takes pride in being your choice for physical therapy in the Chippewa Valley since 1981. Northwoods Physical Therapy is a clinic where you can receive the care you deserve and are treated like family. And dedicated to serving their customers is Kelly Heating and Electric. They've been named one of Brian's Medal of Excellence winners. They provide expert advice from friendly staff that can provide you with the knowledge you need to make the best decisions on your next electrical heating or air conditioning. And Eau Claire Ford, I got to tell you folks that I have my vehicle service there all the time, and I've purchased two vehicles from them, and they have got a fantastic staff, fantastic service. And I've never been disappointed at Eau Claire Ford. And you can visit them at EauClaireFord.com. Mogi. All right. So, guys, you knew ultimately your playing careers were going to come to an end. Was it tough for you to figure out what to do with your life after you finished playing? Let's start with Alec. <laughs> Not really for me. It happened so fast because I was planning on going back to play. And then uh, had that injury. It wasn't really getting better. Kind of had a conversation with the coaching staff here on um, options and what was available. And they said that I could come on as an assistant. And I just thought that was an unbelievable opportunity. And I accepted it. Nice. Jordy, how did you end up here? Um, how did I end up here? Yeah. Um, well, my pro career ended with uh, a pretty bad concussion. And I was pretty frustrated with hockey at the time with the the injuries and my family owns car dealerships back in Manitoba and Western Canada. So I thought I wanted to sell cars for about six months. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I moved to Winnipeg. I moved to Winnipeg in January, which was probably the first mistake. And um, I tried it. I did want to do something out, outside of hockey because I knew, uh, you know, I, I could come back to it because, uh, you know, I had such a passion for it. Obviously, when I played and my dad has done a, you know, made a nice career for himself uh, coaching. But I wanted to try something different and, and 
realized pretty quickly it just wasn't for me. And then uh, I ended up going back to school and got my master's in um, kinesiology and then uh, bought into a, a, my strength coach when, when I was playing pro and ended up starting a company. And so I bought into that company and just did the on ice, basically player development for them for five years. And then uh, uh, reached out to Notre Dame. They've had a good uh, track record of having volunteer assistants that they send on to other programs. Um, and I knew the staff from when I was being recruited as the same staff. And um, when they were looking for a, a volunteer coach, I reached out and what a great learning experience that was that, that one year at Notre Dame. And, and then uh, uh, coach Sean has a good relationship with Jeff Jackson, who's the head coach at Notre Dame. And when this opening became available, uh, they connected and it moved pretty quickly after that. Nice. Yeah. Um, so when my, um, essentially my entry level contract ended, I, my wife ended up moving back up here. Um, and I was trying to actually look for a job up here. There just wasn't any jobs at the time. I actually applied for like a job up at Aspire and like stuff like that. So I was trying to kind of get out of hockey, um, right after that. And really I just came in and met with Mel, um, one day and I was like, Hey, I, you know, I'll just trying to get out of it. I'll just I'll help with the program. I'll do anything I can. I was really interested in like strength and conditioning, like player development stuff at the time. And just kind of ended up where like Mel called me and was like, Hey, we have a, we have a school package for you. It's like not a full position. So Mm. I went back to school, got a master's degree. Um, and then just kind of, I guess went through, uh, went through it, I guess, just having, I mean, at one point I was the head strength coach of the entire university here. So training 14 teams. Yep. While working with hockey and kind of doing that um, from a coaching standpoint. And then, yeah, when coach Sean got hired, um, you know, started to kind of look into more of like the coaching realm and went from there. So all of you have talked about education. Now, Alec, did you go on afterwards to get your uh, master's as well? No, I just graduated with my finance degree, and that'll probably be it. Okay, well, finance degree. Okay, so you guys are no slouches when it comes to education. So for for our younger listeners, you know, obviously your careers have ended, but you relied a little bit not only on your hockey background, but on your education as well. You know, you got any advice for the younger generation, you know, as far as their academics are concerned? I think just the, the biggest thing with with young players, even when we're recruiting them, is you got to stay up with your academics. You, you know, one of the first things we look at is a player's transcript and their grades from high school, and um, and a lot of schools do that. And if you don't have great grades, um, you know, you cut the schools that are could be interested in you in, in half right away. So why why limit yourself for, uh, by not putting in the work and the time and um, for continuing education like? You know, it was important for me to kind of figure out what I was passionate about and going back to school, help with that and kind of learn the science. And, uh, you know, Tyler, and all of us are in the player development now. And I think that that's kind of changed a little bit um, based on what the science that's coming out. And so I think we're we try to think we're on the cutting edge of it and how we create realistic practices and all this and give our guys game repetitions and practice and all this stuff. Um, but it's, yeah, it stems from our passion to just keep improving and keep learning. And um, so I guess that's all I'll say on that. Oh, that's pretty good. So let's let's turn a little bit to the lighter side of hockey. And the three of you are out either preparing for a practice or you're on the ice with the team, and you three are running drills or, you know, getting your act together. Who's chirping who out there on the ice? Isn't it just coach chirping everybody? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't want to go there, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good though. You know, Coach Sean. Obviously, we've had him on on the podcast, and he speaks highly of all three of you. But we wanted to get to know him a little bit better, and 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 then some of it might be the fact that he's good at he's a good chirper. Yeah, I mean, he's a fiery guy. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's he's a very passionate, very fiery guy. So, I mean, he's actually not necessarily. He doesn't really like chirp us too much, to be honest. He's just he's an intense guy, and. Um, you know, I mean, we're all, like I said, we all, we all played the game. So we all have an intensity to ourselves. Um, you know, at times it's like, like 
even we're all mad at some at some capacity and intensity comes out in in different ways but um i wouldn't say coach necessarily chirps us too much do you guys think so no i think i mean for us we're we're all young and we played and we understand that's part of the game and so we we probably chirp the players more than they chirp us and we keep it light i think it's nice for a coach um to have some young assistants uh, you know who can relate different ways than, than he can relate um you know he's obviously gets his message way w through one way and then we just got to deliver that same message in some different ways and we might deliver it a little bit lighter at times and sometimes differently and um but yeah i think having younger coaches uh really helps and and we understand i guess what the players are going through in in the different stages of the season and how to you know keep them positive and into it and you know chirp them and banner with them that's part of it anything elk exactly what jordy said okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, you guys are all still relatively new to the coaching ranks tyler having the the most years underneath him what surprised you most when making the switch from player to coach i mean honestly like when you're a player i don't i don't know if you've you just there's not really like cares like when you're a coach like you have no control like you're you know you can prepare as much as you want um you know talk about as much as you want and ultimately like they're out there playing you know you can have the best game plan in the world that's probably the thing you realize like how it changes and i've been out for a little bit but yeah for that like that's that's the craziest thing is you're just you know you do what you do control what you can control but ultimately it's it's up to them right it's up to them to perform and up to them to um you know do what do what they're gonna do it all looks good on paper and then goes to hell once the ice is hit it does yeah. <laughs> <laughs> best laid plans all right jordy or alec you got anything to add to that yeah i'd say that's the biggest thing especially from last year playing you just while playing you just focus on yourself like what do i need to do to prepare and be my best for this game where now you're thinking about 20 guys on the ice and what you can do to help them do that same thing where there's a lot of uncontrollables that you just need to figure out how to work around and help them you were probably each brought into this program for different reasons, and we'd like to know what that is. You know, each one of you probably has a different role with the team. So, Tyler, what what did Coach see in you that he wanted to bring you on, and what's your role with the program? Um, well, I, I think Coach probably just saw my – probably just my energy. Um, I mean, I'm fairly high strung. So – but, I, I mean, I mean, really, like – and just being a tech alum um having been around the program just you just want to see the program have success um in terms of what i what i do and i think this answer will be kind of reciprocated across all three of us is there's not really a um you know singular thing that ev that only one person does um if you look at like it's, this is going to probably be like just super odd but like teamwork makes a dream work you know like type thing <laughs> like i said they're <laughs> laughing but it's but it's you know if we if we do pk it's you know bots and jordy are helping with pk we go over pp we do it all together um you know i typically run the d but if these guys have clips for the d then you know we'll we'll go over it together if we're talking about our forwards same thing we're all working kind of in one unit one cohesive unit there's not a really separate you know recruiting like we we, we look at kids, like five of a list of kids. I make sure they watch those kids and, um, you know, see if I'm like, see if we're seeing the same thing. If we have differences, you know, talk about why we have differences. And I think that helps, um, you know, that helps recruit better players because, you know, at the same time too, you might see something different than someone else thinks. Someone might like someone more than you like someone. And, you know, you have to work together to have, mm -hmm to have the, the, the best result. So there's, there's not an individual aspect where, you know, we're, we're all just singularly working on things. It's, it's cohesive. Do any of you do any type of recruiting or any of you on the road looking at players? Always. All, so yeah. is that a shared, you know, uh, job between the three of you? Yeah. I mean, I think primarily, so my, my, so this will be my third year. This is Jordy's second, obviously bots his first. So like primarily my first year I did went out and did all the recruiting and that was kind of during COVID. So, uh, you know, getting into Canada and, 
like recruiting during that, like I would kind of just stay there um, at times. And then obviously Jordy came on last year. So we kind of started to split up the, um, I do a lot of the Canadian recruiting and Jordy does a lot of the American recruiting. Um, and then obviously bots comes in here now and he's kind of working into the middle of us. Would you guys say that's right? That's kind of just how we have kind of how it's just kind of worked into our recruiting. So yeah. the UP's got, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jordy. Oh, I think that's just another reason why a lot of the responsibilities are, are, are shared. Like the, the power play PK face offs team play forwards. D. like there's usually not usually, but a lot of times there's someone on the road. So everyone needs to know what's going on in each element of the game. Um, so if someone is on the road, they can boss can run the D or, 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 you know, I can run the power play or Tyler can do PK, you know, whatever it is. If someone's gone, um, we're, we're covered. And some teams don't do that. They just have, uh, I mean, I know you guys interviewed other coaches. They have set roles yeah. and then they have one main recruiter who's on the road. We like to split it up um, based on our connections and our regions that we're comfortable with and it seems to be working for us. So. Oh, I so, say it is. So JC and I just went to see uh, Houghton play Hancock in the wingding game the other night, and it was uh, it was awesome. Great high school hockey atmosphere. Do you guys get around to the UP to check out some of the local teams? Because they've had some good hockey players come out of the UP. Um, so we we obviously have Alex Nordstrom on our team right now. Um, I would say like the the area for sure. Um, you know, you look at historically through our program how many how many kids we've had come through. I guess like Tanner Caro, um, you know Tanner Rose at currently at Michigan. Um, there's a couple of kids that are in junior. We the it's really important I think for especially for local kids. Um, Ray Bryce, obviously captain of ours, it's really important for local kids, especially if we're going to bring them in. Um, they have they have an external, they have kind of an external thing to them. Right. Because like if they're in the lineup, you know, it's how are you playing? If they're out of the lineup, you have everyone in town kind of, you know, asking them, okay, like what, like what's going on and stuff like that. So, um, it's important for them and it's important to us that, you know, there, there are good local kids. Um, but you want to make sure that it's, it's the best thing for the kid that you're not bringing them in and, um, they have, you know, no chance to play or whatever it is. Because, um, like I said, they, they do live outside the rink. And they do know everybody knows them. And I think that's kind of how we go about um, looking at those situations, Mo mostly for the kid, because it's, it's important yeah. to, to give them the best opportunity and, you know, not have to have them kind of deal with everything that could potentially go on externally. Okay. If I'm a kid and I, whether I'm living in Canada or the U S and I've been following tech hockey and I want to play for the Huskies. When you guys are out recruiting and looking and watching game tape, what are you, <clears throat> excuse me, looking for in a player that you want to bring to Michigan Tech? I think kind of what we talked about when we described uh, our playing styles, not, not us specifically, but someone who can bring multiple elements to their game, not just a skill guy, not just a four checker, not just a size strength. Ideally, someone who has a little bit of all three or at least two of the three. Um, that way we can fit them in our lineup, up and down our lineup. And, um, it's, we want to play a certain brand of hockey. And to do that, we have to recruit certain type of kids. And I think even now looking at our lineup, like we want to even, even t in when our recruiting meetings, we talk about adding more size strength, more, more compete, be harder to play against. And that comes from recruiting the right kids. And, um, so there is definitely a certain brand with Michigan Tech and the type of kids we're after, but uh, for sure they got to bring more than just one element to their game. Wow. Okay, for the younger listeners, keep that in mind. Yeah, you know? a couple shout-outs, GAC. Go right ahead, sir. All right, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine has been committed to the health and healthcare needs of patients in western Wisconsin since 1954. The orthopedic surgeons and athletic trainers serve many area schools, and their success and reputation as an outstanding orthopedic clinic can be attributed to the teamwork of friendly, knowledgeable physicians and staff. And JC and I can certainly attest to the, those qualities of that uh, fine institution. And Riverside Bike and Skate, Eau Claire's hockey headquarters, which is the oldest hockey store in the state of Wisconsin. Buy hockey gear from the people that play and know the game. Don't forget about their bicycle. Bicycle sales and service, as well as your paddle sports center for canoes and kayaks. And Hertel Law, 
the law firm you want on your side. Focusing on criminal defense and personal injury, Harry Hertel has been obtaining results for clients in the Chippewa Valley since 1981. When you need legal help if injured or accused of a crime, call 715-832-4330 for a free in-person consultation. JC. Over the last couple of years, Michigan Tech has done a phenomenal job of lifting your your um, facilities here. You guys have got state of the art locker room, weight room, you know, saunas, coaches' offices. It, do you guys find that that is needed or is definitely a draw for a kid that you're trying to get to come to Tech? I mean, yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's an arms race now with everything. It's you look at like. Um, you know, some of the big 10 teams, like with some of the new ranks and obviously Western's getting a new rank, St. Thomas getting a new rank, Augustana just got a new rank, um, kind of have to do it to keep up with everything. Now we're, you know, we, we, we believe that we obviously offer, um, just internally, like inside our program, you know, excellent stuff, great fan base, like cool rank and everything like that. But you do have to have facilities these days to, um, you know, to win battles against, you know, teams that have similar facilities or like bigger campuses or whatever it is, um, you know, and it's also just kind of helps understanding what we are, but um, we want to have good stuff. And I think these guys can probably touch on that as well. I, it was a lot different, obviously when I played, cause there was no renovations yet. Whereas I think bots kind of played through the, one of the renovations, maybe not. Um, you can talk on that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The big locker room, right? Yeah, they did the locker room and the weight room the summer that I graduated. So oh, bad timing. Well, it was still great before, but it looks even better now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you think about it, you've got you guys you two came back to tech. Jordy, this was an area, you came to it, and then you think about you've got a, a former tech alum. Stanley Cup winner who who uh, rents a suite, Randy McKay, to watch the games. So obviously, this is a top tier school when it comes to hockey. When you've got guys that are coming back to their alma mater, you know, buying season tickets to watch. Where do you guys see yourselves in a couple of years? You know, are you happy here, or are we gonna are we gonna throw out a wrench in the works here, and you're gonna oh tell boy. Coach Sean that you're on the way out the door in a couple of years, or? Tyler, what do you think? Um, well, so my wife has a pretty good job here. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, you know what? I don't, to be honest, the way I kind of came up through it, um, you, you know, in a little bit of a different role with Michigan Tech and, and now being an alum here and then obviously having a home here. I, I don't, I mean, you never know what can happen, but I, I don't envision leaving. Um, you know, my, like I said, my wife and I really like it here and it's, I'm probably going to be a lifer here and, you know, like at some point bots will probably live beside me, I'd imagine, but, um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's kind of what I got on that. Is he like the adoptive brother that you're going to take under your wing? He will, but yeah, he has a golden doodle or like something like that. So, um, no, it's, it's like, I, I, like I said, Mich Michigan Tech's given me a lot. Um, you know, I, I kind of respect it a lot more and respect the area. Not that I didn't before, but I respect it a lot more than, than when I played, um, when I came back to it. And like I said, like the opportunity that I was given at this university, um, you know, breaks come in weird ways. You know, you, you think that, you know, you're going to play in the national hockey league for a ton of years. Um, you know, and then I kind of got a break here that changed not only my life, but it also helped my wife, um, you know, get a job up here, which is now transitioned into something, you know, really special for her. So I have nothing but the utmost respect for Michigan Tech, and I don't see that changing. Jordy? I think as a player or coach, you want to go or stay at somewhere where you think you can win. And I think we have everything at Michigan Tech to, to win a championship. Um, with the school, the community, uh, the facilities, obviously the the fan base. Um, now we just got to recruit the the players that are going to come in and help us do that. And, um, so I think we can win here for sure. I think all of us would say someday we'd like to be head coaches. As a young coach, you you want to keep yeah. rising up and being a head coach. But I think right now we're, we're all super. I don't want to speak 
bots hasn't spoken yet, but we're, we're, I know for sure I'm happy to be here and uh, learning a ton every day from coach Sean and Tyler and bots. And I think we have a good staff and uh, we're close and um, I think we have a really good culture. And so I think things are going the right way. We just got to scan the recruiting trail and then bring in the right kids to help bring that championship to, to Houghton. Yeah. So from the second I stepped on campus, I didn't leave. So from my came in the summer before my freshman year, <laughs> loved it, stayed for freshman year, stayed all the next summer and so on, all the way till senior year. And then uh, last year I was in Iowa City, another college town. I loved it, but it's not Houghton. The community here, the school, everything, I just loved it. It was home. Girlfriend here, good job here. So she's not leaving. So just ended up back here. Didn't want it any other way. And just okay. love it. Nice, nice pull. Yeah. So getting back to the coaching aspect of this for just a second, guys. You've been you've been behind the bench now for what do you have about thirty games under your belts right now or something like that, yeah. give or take. Yeah. So what do you do? You, you notice a player is is struggling. How do you how do you approach him? How do you address the issue? And and what do you do to help him see it through? Alec, let's start with you. Just try and relate to them because I mean I've definitely been through it. Where if you have a, a stretch where you're struggling. Um, just tell them things that helped me out, try and talk through it with them, kind of what they're seeing, how they're feeling. Um, just watching. For me, what helped me was watching my game over and kind of seeing where I get time and space, like where I can make plays, uh, just doing that. So I try and take what helped me and try and help them, um, just talk through it with them, kind of see how they're feeling, what the way they see it, and just go from there. How about you, Jordy? Yeah, I'd, I'd say the same. I think we have a really good group of, of players who are pretty self-aware. Um, if they're not playing great, they usually have an understanding that they aren't playing great. And if there's a lineup change or they're not seeing as much ice time, that they get it. They would still like to see it on video. And, and I did when I played. Um, and for us, we talk about this. Coach talks about this a lot is uh, if a player is, if there's a breakdown on a play or a player isn't doing something on the ice that you want them to, to be doing or, or attempting to do, it's, it's either there's no understanding, there's a lack of, of skill, or there's a lack of effort. And so you can see on video pretty quickly one of the, you know, which one of the three it is. Um, and if it's a lack of understanding, you can talk through it and show them it. And, uh, and so they know exactly what you are expecting of them in, in certain instances. And then if it's a lack of skill, well, we can get on the ice and, and create that situation in small group skills or in practice and um, do extra stuff that way. And then if it's effort, well, that's on them. They gotta, we, yeah. but they gotta know that it's effort, and um, that is not acceptable. And they gotta bring more effort to it. And uh, I think once they know, and when we know it's one of those three, we can address it and keep working on it. And hopefully, uh, you know, with with our support, they can help grow, grow out of those um, downtimes. Okay. Looking at your roster of players, who's your leader or leaders in the locker room? God, I was just going to ask that question. It's awesome. Um, I mean, well, I mean, Ar Arvid's, you know, an un unbelievable captain. Um, Blake Piedela actually, like, you know, just can't say enough good things about him. He's just he's just a fiery competitor. You know, you, I mean, Blake's a goalie, so um, positionally a little bit different than players, but you, 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 he's the type of kid that you, you want to play in front of him. You know, like he's highly respected by all our guys. Um, you know, you, you want to do everything for him to, to make it easier on him. You know, Moser does a great job kind of lead by example guy. Logan, lead by example guy. Like we, like, can't say enough about, um, you know, how those, those kids are. Like they're just absolutely unbelievable human beings. Like there's, you know, as we have a ton of those kids. Um, but in terms of like just, just leaders and then a the guy that's out and we're actually missing him a ton right now is Kyle Kukunen. Um, you know, just another great kid, like kind of lead by example type kid wants to get better. Um, you know, has had a, has had a tough year, but to his credit has been able to, um, you know, kind of stick through some of the tough times, which is ultimately, you know, on us to try to help him get through it as well. But cause it hasn't been easy for him, but I commend him for just, just kind of how he's, you know, showing up. He doesn't show up to the rink and sad and like stuff like that. He shows up and he was, he's ready to work. And even right now he's, you know, he's in a boot, but has a smile on his face and he's, you know, trying to help the guys. So 
that's kind of what leadership is to me. And um, being a great teammate. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd yeah. have to say that, you know, you mentioned Blake Pedela. You guys have got like a roster line itself of Pedelas. <laughs> so when when you see one of them screwing up on the ice, do you holler Pedela and you have six of them turn around and look at you? Or do you have you had to learn their names by, you know, first name so when you're hollering at them, they know who you're talking to? That's a question for coach sometime down the road. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, you've been around this league for, for a long time now. So uh, which teams, when you know, you look at the calendar, you know when they're going to come up here, which team you know is you're always going to be in for a huge battle when they get here? Maybe I'll go first because these guys played against these guys. They played at Tech and played in this league. And well, I guess not you, Tyler. Um for me, I, it's crazy. I don't think we've won. I can't remember the last time we won a, a game by more than two goals. That wasn't an empty netter. Like every game has been an absolute battle this whole year, no matter the team we played in our league. And I think every team in our league would say the same thing. They're all one goal games. And we had a lot of one goal games last year. We just happened to be on the other end of it. And this year, you know, we were going through a stretch where we, were, we weren't winning those one goal games. I think uh, whenever Bemidji comes up, they play similar style us. It's going to be a, a war. Um, Northern Michigan rivalry derby game like that's going to be an absolute war they play probably a different brand of hockey against us than they play against any other team in our league and then you have just the bigger heavier teams like Bowling Green and Ferris and then Mankato hasn't taken a step back after the changes they've made and um, so I I just I can't single out a single team in our league like St. Thomas and, and you know younger team really really good speed good transition like you got to be ready for a different type of game than maybe some of the other teams in our league when when you play St. Thomas but and Lake State's hard to play against and Lake State so, yeah it's yeah so everybody it sounds say, like you covered everybody in the, yeah. in the whole conference well the CCHA is one heck of a conference in itself and on any given night looking at at the rankings right now anybody can beat anybody. So what's the pregame speech that you're giving your players to say, this battle is ours tonight. We know that we can win this one. Is there anything in particular that you're talking to them about or, or feeding them before they step on the ice? Well, I think it's, to be honest, I think, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it is on them, like from a leadership standpoint to kind of get it, get the guys going. Um, just consistently, but re but really, I, if you look at our team, it's it's the third periods. Um, you look at how many, you know, one goal leads we've had going into the third. Um, ultimately, I think that's probably the growth for this team, especially with this group. Like we obviously have, you know, Isaac Gordon, who's a young player, Costco Purity is a young player, Campbell, Pietro, those guys are young players, like, um, and they're really good, like high end players. Um, the sooner that we can create the mindset that we, you know, don't panic in those situations. Like that's the stuff that turns, you know, like Jordy kind of said it, that's the thing that turns a 12 and 12 record into potentially, you know, 17 and eight or, you know, and all of a sudden you're inside the pairwise and all of a sudden you're, you're going to win the McNaughton. So that's, um, the pregame stuff is just, that's our preparation as coaches trying to get them ready to play. Um, but a lot of times, like I said, if you look at us, like we can, we can get to that position where we have a chance to win games, even if it's far back as Wisconsin, you know, having a lead go into the third period. Um, that's growth for us as a team. That's growth, growth for us as a program. And I think a lot of it that, that has to be on them. Um, that has to be on the leadership that has to be on the kind of just the intrinsic calmness of the player right? To just continue to play the way we need to play. I mean, because we, for the most part, got there because we played a certain way, got there because we were managing pucks or whatever we did to um, you know, score in the power play. So then the next level, especially in a winning culture, not like a winning culture that's going to drive, you know, potentially winning national championships is that. And if you look at Mankato, right? Like Mankato um, from with like Hasty and Nodder and stuff like that, like they whatever won seven McNaughton's or something in a row. But if you look at Mankato, like if they're up in the third, like going into the third, like their third period was their best period. And they would just take over games and wear teams down and end up winning four, one or five, one. That's oh, wow. our goal. Um, that's where we need to be to, you know, to be a team that at the end of the day can win a national championship. 
And that's, I know I'm getting long winded on this, but that's, that's on our guys. And that's kind of that internal, um, you know, like I said, internal calmness and not panic, you know, and that's, that's what you have to get over to, to ultimately be really successful. So you mentioned Minnesota Mankato and, uh, coincidentally we're here, um, on the weekend when you when you're playing them you played them last night you beat them three to one with a empty net goal at the end of the game um it's saturday what do you expect to see from your team tonight alec why don't we start with you ideally just a good first period i mean if we have the first period that we started with yesterday and bring that tonight i think we'll be well off but we got to bring that for 60 minutes. It can't be first period and then second period's a step down and then third period, another step down. We, we got to learn from yesterday and a lot of the previous weekends that when we come out, we bring it for 60 minutes. And I think we have a good test for that tonight. And hopefully the guys step up and, and pull it off. Anything, Jordy? No, I mean, I just, I'd echo that. I think uh, our start's going to be a huge tonight. Coach ended the meeting today with uh, fourth period's the biggest period. And then when that period's over, the fifth period, and then the sixth period, like we just can't no, can't let up at all. And that's got to be – I thought we had a really good first – so against Northern, we didn't have great starts to either game. The, so this was the prior weekend. And then last night we came out and had uh, two like really good shifts, almost a, a, a minute of sustained zone time, and then we ended up scoring a quick goal. Um, so if we have a start, you know, you don't have to score right away in the first two minutes, but you got to set the tone and pace for the game. And I, and then once you set that tone and pace, you got to build on it and, and, and not let your foot off the, off the pedal. And, um, so I think we got to use the energy of the crowd. It's going to be another sold out game and winter, winter carnival trophies on the line. And so we just got to use that energy and, and come out flying the, the, that first shift. You know, when you said the energy and the fans, how important is your fan base here, you know, at Michigan Tech in the John McGinnis Ice Arena? Absolutely love it. I mean, every game, it doesn't matter who we're playing. They're showing up, lining up out the door, just ready to go, excited. Um, as players and coaches and as a school, you definitely feel the love. Um, it makes it just that much more fun going out and playing when you know you got the entire community on your back. I got one more question for you guys, and that is, this is an amazing arena to play in, but what barn for you guys is the toughest barn to go to? I mean, I, you're, are you talking right now or when we played? How about, oh, you know what? Let, let's go. Whatever answer you got, I'm kind of interested. You got kind of got a smirk on your face, so yeah, I'm liking I, this. I mean, I mean, and I'm sure Jordy can probably – attest to this but it was north dakota um going there was you know twelve thousand loud and they had really good teams and that was a really difficult place to play that was for sure like you know now fun probably one of the funnest places to play but um tough for sure i like it and the last one i got for you here is what do we need to see out of michigan tech the next few weeks to make sure that they're in the top 16 pairwise or to make it into the NC2A tournament? I think we just got to keep growing. I think uh, we took a good, I thought, step yesterday. Tyler was talking about finishing out games and playing hard in the th right through the third period. And I thought we did that last night. And we do have a young group, but if we keep growing and, uh, you know, starting well and then finishing well, I think we can we can beat anyone in our league for sure. And um, they're, they're all going to be close games. What's nice about all the close games we've had this whole season is we're conditioned and we're ready for those close games. <laughs> um, so now we just got to be, be coming out on the other side of those close games, which I, I think last night was a good step in the right direction. Guys, time has flown by. We're uh, over an hour here, and we appreciate your time. All we can say is thanks. It's been a great conversation, and, and Mogi and I wish you the best of luck the rest of the year. Awesome. Thank thanks, you. guys. That's Thank great. you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to leave a, a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment on your social media platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Mogi? Hey, a huge thanks to our guests, Tyler Shalast, Jordy Murray, and Alec Bretzman, as well as you, our faithful listeners. <laughs> please remember our sponsors, Riverside Bike and Skate, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Hertel Law, Kelly Heating and Electric, Eau Claire Ford, and Northwoods Therapy Associates. Please follow us on your favorite social media platforms. And remember, folks, until next time, keep your heads on a swivel and stay on your inside edges. 